Hi! In this video, we're going to keep talking about functions in Carol. So what is a function? Well, a function is a way to teach Carol a new word. So why do we use functions? Well, functions allow us to, one, break our programs down into smaller parts, rather than one massive string of commands, we're separating it into separate functions, separate problems that we're solving independently. They make our programs easier to understand because we can give useful names to strings of commands, such as turn right or turn around. And it helps us avoid repeating code over and over. Rather than writing out turn left, turn left, turn left, every single time we want to turn right, we can simply write turn right, which is what we actually mean to do. So because functions break our program down into smaller parts, they really help simplify the problem solving process. Rather than writing out one huge program that does all the work, we can separate it out into functions that each solve a tiny piece of the puzzle. And because functions make the program easier to understand and avoid repeating code over and over, this helps others be able to read our code and understand our code. And this is very important because we want to be able to code with others. Most of the time when you're working on big coding projects, you're not working alone. There's a team of people working together to make the program. So it's very important to be able to code with others and functions help us work with others and make our code readable. So functions are one of the most important parts of programming. Programming is really just teaching the computer to do new things. That's all programming is. Computers can't do certain things. We write a program so that the computer now knows how to do it. We want to teach the computer to do new things. And that's exactly what functions are. Functions teach the computer new commands. It's teaching Carol new commands. So functions make it easier for us to program and much easier for others to read our programs. So functions are very important. All programming languages let you write functions. So now let's take a look at writing functions in Carol. How do we write Carol functions? So this is the general format for a function. We say function, name of the function, parentheses, curly braces, and the code for the function goes inside the curly braces. So for example, here's a function called build pyramid. Now naming is crucial when we're writing functions. We need to choose names that give a proper description to the function. From this name, build pyramid, it's very clear what this function does. It builds a pyramid. So general rules for naming your functions. The name should start with a letter and it cannot have any spaces. Every new word in the name should start with an uppercase letter. This is called lower camel case. So the first letter of the first word is lowercase, but every time you start a new word, you, you uppercase it and it makes it very easy to read. We can see lower camel case. Now the name should describe what the method does. And the name should start with an action verb. It should sound like a command. We're giving Carol a command, so the function should sound like an actual command, like sit or stay or roll over. So let's look at some examples of naming functions. So this first one, build tower, that one's looking pretty good. Spin twice, that looks good. Proper format, it's, a, it's an action verb. What about this one, build tower? Well, it's a good action verb and it's descriptive, but it's bad because that T should be capital. Tower is a new word, we need lower camel case. So that T should actually be capital. There we go, now it's good. How about five moves? Well, this one's bad because it needs to start with a letter. A function name cannot start with a number. So instead of five moves, let's call it move five times. Great. How about this one, tower? Well, that one's not a good name because it's not an action or a command. We can't tell Carol to tower, but we can tell Carol to build a tower. Great, build tower, good. And this last one, blah, blah. Well, this one's bad because it's not descriptive. It doesn't, I have no idea what this function does looking at the name blah, blah. So instead of blah, blah, let's give it a nice descriptive name like take four balls. Great. So these are all good names for functions. Now there's an important distinction between defining a function and calling a function. Defining a function is actually teaching Carol the new word. It's giving a definition for the function. Calling it is actually getting Carol to do the command. So defining it is saying, hey, Carol, to turn right, you should just turn left three times. It's telling Carol how to do it. Calling a function is actually getting Carol to do it. It's saying, okay, now I need you to turn right. Now that you know how to do it, do it. Another way to think about it is defining a function is writing out the instructions for this new action. It's writing out the turn left, turn left, turn left. Calling a function is actually causing that new action to happen. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say I want to define a function called turnaround that has Carol face the opposite direction. Well, to define turnaround, I need to write function turnaround, open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly brace, and inside the function body, give the instructions for how Carol turns around. 
To turn around, you turn left twice. So this is teaching Carol the new word. Carol hasn't actually done it yet. Carol just now knows how to do it. If I want Carol to actually do it, then I need to call it. I need to call the turnaround function. So this tells Carol to actually carry out the action. We can add some more commands, move, move, and turn left. And let's say we want Carol to turn around again. We can call the function again. So this tells Carol to do the action again. We can call a function as many times as we want, but we can only define a function once. So this is how we define a function. This is how we call a function. We define it by giving the instructions for how the command should work. And we call it by actually telling Carol to carry out the command. So with that, let's go write a function. So here I want to write a program that has Carol move once and then turn around. So to do that, I'll drag out the move. And I want Carol to turn around. So I'll type out turn around command. Let's try running this. So here we have a problem. Carol doesn't know how to turn around. So I've called turn around, but turn around is not defined. There's no definition for this function. So to fix that, let's actually define the function. We'll go over here to functions. This is for function definition. I'll drag this out. So now we can define turn around. We can tell Carol how to turn around. So to turn around, all I need to do is turn left twice. So let's add this definition and now try. Awesome. Carol moved and then turned around. And notice we can call turn around as many times as we want. We can move again and then turn around again. If we go to code view, we see that every time we're calling turnaround, it's actually a shortcut to the turnaround function. So Carol will execute the instructions inside of the turnaround function. We go back to move. Now we're going to turn around again, so we're going to hop inside the function, turn left twice. Let's move again, turn around again. So we move, turn around. So turn around, turn left twice. Great. Move again, turn around again. Well, let's hop into the function, turn left twice. Awesome. Now back to where we came from, move one more time, turn around again, turn left twice. Great. Now, one more thing I want to point out about the editor is that if you ever need to look up an example or look up how a certain part of Carol works, you can go over here to the Docs tab and you see what is called documentation for how Carol works. So here we have a lot of examples and you can see the proper syntax for using all the features of Carol. So you see all of Carol's built-in commands, you see how functions work, how to define a function, call a function. So this is a great resource while you're writing your programs. Check out the Docs tab and you can see information on how Carol works. And if you're ever really stuck and you've been testing your code and you've asked your classmates, you've asked your partner, you've read the Docs section and you still have no idea what to do, you can actually go to the Help tab and you can type out a question to your teacher and send it through the Help tab. So with that, it is your turn to go and write some more Carol functions.